Hi, I'm Vidya, and I'm gonna talk about how to have a breakdown. First, start with a big deal problem. Man, did I do this one right. I even had the right setting. We're talking straight to DVD movie, sobbing outside of the Senate. Why, you might ask, in the city where you don't show vulnerability, did I have an excuse for public crying? I realized I was making genocide worse. All right, big problem, check. <laughs> Next, you have to let yourself totally fall apart. I don't even remember what happened next. Somehow, I got home, I turned off all the lights, sank into bed, and just let go. For days, I didn't eat, I just lay there, going between crying, sleeping, waking, and staring blankly. I didn't even feel like I existed anymore, and this is key. Sometimes we're afraid to let ourselves fall apart because we want to know we'll come out on the other side. But it's really important that you go all in. Otherwise, you won't trust it. I wouldn't. Yeah, for real. You'll feel like the rest of your life, the big problem is still lurking under the table. So next thing, wallow. My uncle came by with ice cream to cheer me up. I told him I violated the one rule, first do no harm. There was nothing left for me. I curled up in my PJs, figured out a Cherry Garcia delivery mechanism that worked in the fetal position, and settled in to watch Gandhi on repeat. Guys, I was drinking ice cream through a straw. I needed Gandhi. <laughs> what I'm saying is sneak inspiration, and you'll find it. I had to get to a place where I could dissect my failure. And it turns out, Gandhi called off the, the independence movement at one point because it became violent. He said, we cannot become the nation we want to if we use the wrong means to get there. I knew the policy approach wasn't working. Why hadn't I had the courage of my convictions? I was ready to dissect. And this is actually the most important part. Chart the process of your failure and do it with no agenda. I didn't think I was ever going back to work, but if I thought so, it would have biased me. Um, there will be layers. Start with the facts, but keep peeling till you get to the emotional core of your failure. For me, I had been living my dream working on genocide intervention policy. I thought I was pretty awesome, a DC hotshot saving lives. But underneath the bravado, I had this sick feeling in my gut for years that I was afraid to look at. I knew we were failing. No matter how many victories I stacked up, it never reached the people most affected by conflict. Their lives were getting worse. Why? Number one cause for program failure is a lack of focus on the grassroots. I was a legislative contortionist, squeezing in grassroots measures where I could, but it didn't work. Why? We treat genocide like an event, not a process. That means we only strike, we'd never strike at the root, we only strike at symptoms. Genocide is about power, about access to resources, and it's maintained through institutionalized oppression, the deliberate stripping of rights to keep a population illiterate, underdeveloped, and unable to demand their rights. My work amounted to celebrating when my headache went away after popping Advil, but it ignored that I had a growing brain tumor. And we know this in the policy community. We recognize grassroots as the number one priority, but we don't take the time, we spend 2% of our budgets on, on it. We do what we know how to do. So I had to identify my excuses. The biggest one for me was that I thought grassroots was too scary. There's no charted path. There's no cheat sheet to deliver results. And when we fail, it's people's lives. I was scared that I might fail. Turns out, I already had. I had no legit excuses. So I needed to identify a set of guiding principles moving forward. The hardest one to live by to this day is never accept anyone else's Kobayashi Maru. Every, everything's impossible until someone does it. Embrace the struggle. If we're going to do anything extraordinary, we'll have to struggle extraordinarily. That's just math. And then come out of the failure closet. Tell people. Shame is a killer, both of people and the evolution of our ideas. No one's done this alone. Ask for help. And then 10, get to work. I started a small pilot project doing microfinance in East Congo with 25 women. Today, two years later, we're launching the first ever Congolese Women's Peace Summit. And we've achieved measurable results at the individual, communal, and societal levels. And with today's connected world, you can be a part of it. Start tonight by telling me what you resolve to do with the hashtag IResolve. We built this path the only way that works, brick by brick. 
and we want you to be a part of it. Thank you.